Monica. Hello everyone, this is Monica. Today my topic is about Blofish algorithm. Mainly, this Blofish algorithm is a symmetry key algorithm. And as we all know that symmetric key algorithm means where we are going to use a key which is same for both encryption and the decryption. And this in and in this Blofish algorithm, we are going to have 18 subkeys, literally 18 subkeys, where we are going to use for both encryption and the decryption. And it is also and we are also have a block cipher of size of 64 bits. The main thing of block cipher is to convert the plain text into the cipher text. It plays a crucial role in it. And we are going to have and thus in this blowfish algorithm, it's an encryption technique and which was introduced by Bruce Lee Singer in 1993. And it is also called as an alternative method for DES algorithm and IDE algorithm. And it all, it follows a feastal structure, which means, um, which will be very fast. Fine, it's, it follows a feastal structure. And let's discuss about small, small, small characteristics of the blowfish algorithm. And it is very, blowfish algorithm is very fast. Because, and even when compared to the BE's algorithm and AE's algorithm, blowfish algorithm will be very fast in execution. And it is a compact when, I mean, it, it executes in a low space or less memory, we can say in that way. And it's a simple one because in that, uh, we are go, I mean, in the later part of the video, I'm going to say that we'll use a function. In that function, we are going to have some add and the auxiliary operations. That's why you're going to call it as simple because we are using the basic operations. That's why you'll be calling it as simple. And the secured one, because the variable length, the key size of the, um, sorry, in the blow, in blowfish algorithm, we are going to have a key size variable one because third, uh, it varies from 30 to 448 bits. It continuously varies. So it will be a very secure one. Even for hacking also, it will not be possible because it varies, because we can't say that it's a bit, it's a key, it's key size is this, uh, this much. It, we can't decide it. That's why it's a bit very important. Now, let me briefly say about the size, what, how the block sizes will be, the key sizes will be, and number of subkeys in this, and how many rounds we are going to take, and how many Xbox we have used. Let's briefly discuss all about this. Now, we are going to give a 64-bit input to this. That's what the block size indicates. Here we have in Here we have included at 64 bits, right? It's a block size and a key size uh, and a key size. It's a variable one because it varies from 30 to 40. This is what I am have mentioned before. And the number of subkeys we are mentioning uh, we have used here at 18, as I told before. And we each subkey as having 32 bit. And the rounds we are going to uh, and the number of rounds in the in the structure is 16. And the total number of S boxes we are going to use are four. And here we are going to have 256 entries for the each Xbox and each Xbox contains 32 bits. Now brief, let's briefly discuss about how the process will be like. First, we need to generate the key. Next, we need to initialize the Xboxes. Later on that we need to encrypt and later on that we are going to decrypt the data. And all this we are going to see now. Here, let's see the how the encryption, so how, sorry, how we are going to generate the subkeys. Initially, uh, as I told that we are going to have 18 subkeys, right? 18 subkeys. And those we are, we will be stored in a P array, which is, uh, which will be like P0, P1, P2, P3, and so on, until the P9, P17. And otherwise we can represent it in either way, like P1, P2, P3, and so on, until the P18 one. Now, and we are going to use hexadecimal representation for these values. And let me say this, fixed values, P0, P1, P2, P2, are having some fixed hexadecimal values for the initial computation of our original P1, P array. As I told that P value varies with respect to the key input value. Now let's discuss in this way, small example, like, like uh, suppose we are going to have a bit of uh, input size of like 330, 384 size or 384 is our input bit size. Now we are, as I told that in everything we are going to, I mean, we have to divide it by 32 because in every, I mean, we are going to divide it by 32, which means that we are going to have 12 portions. Means we are going to generate 
12th keys like k1 k2 so on like this in this way this is what i have uh, let me show in this pdf it will be a bit clear for you huh. suppose let's take that as i told that we are taking a input key of 384 bits and we all thought that every portion should be of 32 bit right from that i got k1 k2 k3 like that we have to divide until the k12 because later on that we are have i mean that we are going to do how how i mean that I, i'm just going to show how we are going to calculate the p not value from the initial fixed p not values we are going to do an exact operation between the our fixed values and the first 32 bits and later on for p p1 we are going to do we are, we are going to use the next 32 bits and for p3 we are going to use next 32 bits like that we are going to use 32 32 32 bits in this way for p1 here see like for first p0 we are going to use we are going to do an xor operation between p0 and the we have taken the 384 bit key size right in that first 32 which we are going to take and for p2 again p1 will be the standardized one and again next from 33 bits to 64 bits we are going to consider as k2 and so on we are going to until until we have a maximum size now we are having a maximum size at 384 right until then we are going to do after completion of this what we have to do we already have it out right now we are going to take like k1 again we are going for the first 32 bits later on that it continues and we are going to generate 18 bits from that now um, this is from this is by example i have seen now we can see how it will be theoretically represented like this p0 as i told that p0 what we are we are going to calculate this new one and this p0 is xor operated with the first 32 bits of the input key again p1 first initial standardized one it will it is xor operated with second 32 bits of the input key and so on we are going to do and here see the maximum bits we are going to get is m um, uh, 14 into 30 to 448 that's the maximum bit and as i told before that we are going to use the variable length 30 to 448 right that 448 is the maximum limit later on that we have took the same first first 32 bits for 14th one like that we are going to generate all the 18 bits i think i hope i'm clear now now let's see the second step how we are going to initialize this s boxes as i told that uh, we are going we are having four s boxes and we are having 256 entries and we are going i mean sorry we are going to how we are going to name them as s0 s1 s2 s3 and s4 and uh, each s box is having 32 bits is the main point to be noted and we use these s boxes mainly for encryption and the decryption now let's briefly discuss about how we are going to do the encryption and all as i told the first input pre uh, input will be like 64 plain bit right plain text that is what we are going to give here this is the 64 bit later on that we are going to divide it into th two 32 bit and 32 bits this is what we have divided 32 bit and 32 bit now we are going to uh, we already found the p1 p0 p0 on a, until we have found the sub keys until the p18 right those p gates are these p1 p2 like that we have been using here the first we are going to use the p1 with l1 we are going to get a result here right let's name it as x some x we are going to get an x that text we are going to pass through this function now we are going to get a final output here as f of x now we are going to do an xor operation with this f of x and the f of 1. And finally, we are going to get a value right here. Here and here, we have obtained two values. Let be, let it be like if this is one is a and this one is b. Now we are going to swap it. So the b value will be going to the l2 side and the a value will be given to the r2 side. And both will be of 32 bits. Until now, we have completed a round 1. Now we are going to see, I'm saying like this, we are going to complete until the round 16th one. After getting to the round 16th one, now we have to what to do. Until now we have completed only the 16 sub keys, whatever the other two sub keys, what we are going to do. That's all we have to form. Now, as I told that we have left with P, sorry, let's see here. We are left out with P18 and under one is P17, right? The two things that we have left and we have got these are the final ones we are going to undo our swapping until now we have continuously swapped right 
r1 value is giving to l2 and uh, l value is giving to the next r for that swapping we are going to undo our snap for that we are going to use this p18 and p17 key so that we are going to we are uh, going to undo it later on that we are going to concatenate it so that we will get our 64 bit cipher this is what the encryption follows let me show in an algorithm way or how we have to write it in in terms of words first first of all what i said we are going to divide our plain text into two words like l part and r part 32 bits 32 bits right that's what the first step indicates later on that we are doing rounds right r1 r sorry round one round two round two until the 16th one that is what i have um, represented in the for loop i is equals to one to the i was 16. as i told that first l is equals to what i have did for the for kind of for finding the l value i did that l xor and the p value p in the sense sub key and for r value what i did i have uh, have given the resultant function from l to function right with that xor operation i have did the ri this is what i have did again i have swapped the li and ri that's all i have did and last step i have unknown the this last swap right later on that i have did the xor operation between p17 and p18 later we have combined all the 32 bit and 32 bit to 64 bit this is what i have represented here in in, in terms of words that's all now let's clearly discuss about the function uh before here i have used that we are have we are having everywhere i have used the here is a function here is a function i hope we all have a doubt what here what is the function what we are going to use and again we didn't discuss about the x blocks what we are having and all right now let me say what the function and what it does here this is a small structure as it as we seen that we are going to get a 32 bit input right into the function how maybe i'll show wait a sec see here here we have got 32 and 32 bit xor operation so here also we are going to have 32 bit one so this would be our input to the f and output should be also in 32 bit right when you give a 32 bit one we will get we will be getting a 32 bit one right now how we are going to get what that one we are going to see how we are going to use that function actually now see here this is the uh, this is the diagram let's uh, say that we are having four s boxes as we know that we are using the four s boxes here let's name them as s naught s1 s2 and s3 and the last one as S3. Fine, right? Now, uh, we are, we, I told that we are going to give a 32 bit in, right? Now, the 32 bit should be equally distributed to the four S boxes. Now, what we will generally do? 32 by four, right? Then how we are going to get eight bits for each? So we are going to give eight bits for each one. And we are, like what X boxes do is generally, it will give out it will give us a 32 bit output that and all i am not going to discuss here now what the function does here, does here i'll be saying that one now this the we are going to perform an s we, have, we are going to perform an xor sorry add operation between s naught and s1 let's suppose that we are going to get an output like some x we got an output like x now we are going to perform an xor operation between this x and the s2 one I hope I'm clear. Now, after completion of these two, we are going to get some resultant as some y. We got some resultant as y. Now, now we are going to perform an add operation between this last S3 and this y. Now, after completion of this, we are going to have finally a 32 bit. That is what we will be doing an XOR operation with the right side of our thing. That's all guys. After here, you're going to get, this is what the function is, what the function does. Now let's see the, about the decryption. Decryption also is very, very similar to the encryption process. First, as I saw, uh, but the thing what we have to remember is, here we are going to reverse because uh, we, are, we are having a cipher text and we are going to complete, we are going to find out what the plain text is, right? So we have to do the reverse process generally. That is what I am same we are going to use the 18 sub keys here but in the reverse manner so we are going to represent in the p array like p17 p16 until the p0 
and this is how the decryption follows first we are going to have 64 bit cipher text later on that we are going to use round one we are going to find p not same the process what we have followed in the encryption we are going to follow the same process here itself but we are going to um don't worry that we have using this uh, post processing post processing is nothing but we have did the anonymous swapping and the before encryption process the last step right that is what is here also going to happen and finally we are going to get the plain text what we have did in the plain uh, encryption process first we are going to generate 18 sub keys right that is what we are also following here we are going to have fix some fixed values for p not to p 17 until the these fixed values with the help of fixed values we are going to do the XOR operations with the first 32 bits again second 32 bits in the same way we will get the new p array this will be our new p array after with the help of this p array we are going to calculate how our plain text now again we are going to initialize our s boxes and our x boxes are four which we will be denoting s not s not and we are having an entry for 256 it's all the same but here when it comes to the decryption here it varies it's a decryption part and now it varies actually we are going to have two parts like one is for rounds and another one is pre -process, post processing rounds is very very similar not a very similar it's very very similar to the rounds um, what we have done in the encryption process and we are going to just in place of p0 and p1 we are going to use p17 in the reverse way you are going to use your sub keys that's all after getting your what we call a 32 bit out i'm oh, sorry six, uh, 32 bit you will get it right 32 and 32 that's after completion of you will after completion of 16 rounds you will be having a 64 bit output that's what we are going to do in what we are going uh, all what we are going to do is depending upon that 64 bit in the post processing now let me say about what post processing is and what we are going to do in post processing we are going to have 64 bit is uh, from the as i told that we are going to get an output of 64 bits from the 18 uh, from the 16 rounds that is what i have i am having here I'm having here. Now we are going to go divide it into 30D and 32, some left side and right side. Again, this P1. Uh, actually, before we are we are left out with P17 and P16, right? But now we are going to be left out with P1 and P0 as we did reverse for decryption, right? Now we are going to have two values. And with that, you are going to XOR operation and we are going to swap it as we did for encryption itself last bit we are going to swap right with the help of p17 and the p16 keys that's what actually it all, it here also happened later we are going to concatenate both two then we are going to get 64 bit plain text this is what happened this is what the blowfish algorithm means for encryption and the decryption and it's uh, the main drawback of this is it takes a lot of time and it consumes more data nearly about 4 kb it consumes our data that's why it's uh, it's a drawback of this. Another one is uh, there is another algorithm called as two fish algorithm. It actually it's very better in you know, it's very it's it, I mean, it's very better in many cases than our blowfish algorithm. 